All right, welcome back. I'm Dorothy. I'm a professional astrologer. You can find me on the web, nhastrologer.com. <laughs> I just rang that bell. This is for the month of July and for those of you who are Virgo or have Virgo rising. So we're going to start right off on July 1st. We have a full moon in the sign of Capricorn. The sun's in Cancer. The moon's in Capricorn. That runs from your... Um, 11th house to your fifth house and when we have that energy going on a full moon in that fifth house it really is should be bringing up and bringing awareness into your life in regards to where you're passionate the things that you are passionate about um, the things that you're creative and how you're creative and also your children if you have children that fifth house area is all about that as well so some of these things will be coming up. I can't tell you exactly which ones it would be because you'll know. But those are the areas that uh, this full moon will illuminate. And if there's something in your life that is taking what, way too much time and is not satisfying for you, then full moons are opportunities for us to release and let things go. And that is what I would recommend. Now, we're going to move on to July 6th. Now, on July 6th, the next aspect I've chosen to talk about is the sun, again, in the sign of Cancer, still is now in an opposition aspect to Pluto. Now, it will do this once a year. Now's the time. On the 1st, the moon kind of moved itself right over and made a conjunction to Pluto. And so, as we're looking at these energies, what this represents is that there is a big shift and change anyways going on in your fifth house because that's where Pluto's been for a lot of years and so you should be over the last few years really recreating yourself reinventing yourself it is an extremely slow process typically we don't even recognize that we're going through a change until we stop and we look back a few years and say wow look at what I've done over the last few years I didn't even realize but a full moon once a year in the sign of Capricorn in that area near Pluto will, will help you to realize the things that are working for you and the things that are not working for you. And as, you know, the next few days go along, then you'll just sort of release the things that need to be released and you'll move on. Pluto will still be in that sector, though, and it'll stay there for a very long time. On July 12th. I want to see that next. The sun as well. I'm focusing in on the sun because the sun's in the sign of cancer this month for most of it. <coughs> Excuse me. And it is making a square aspect to Uranus. And that, again, goes from the 11th house. The sun, when the sun traverses the 11th house, our main focus with the sun there and this, what the sun is illuminating is what we're doing in regards to our, with friends, with groups, what social things are important for us right now. It is like social marketing as well or any of the social um, media is what I meant to say and well social marketing too if that's part of your gig. But with Uranus moving through that eighth house and the sun squaring it on the 12th of July, uh, both of these energies are cardinal signs, so that just recomm that just tells me that there is some movement. I think if you were to look at um, working on a group endeavor, especially if it's something that is big and something that would be um, helpful for a lot of people, there could be actually an opportunity for you to earn a fair amount of money doing something like that. But you could also go flip that coin and just look and see. You might be spending too much money, all right, or... There's some way that with Uranus moving through that eighth house that your financial situation has just been going up and down over the last couple of years. And right now the sun making a square to that sector, to the to Uranus in that sector, then this is uh, being made, well, you're being made aware of something that's going on financially. So don't put your head in the sand. It's important to address whatever is going on there for you. On the 15th of July, the new moon in the sign of Cancer. Now that goes on in your 11th house, and that is a fabulous area to have a new moon because that area, besides being those social things I just mentioned, it's also the area of our hopes and dreams and where we really can set goals. And whenever we have a new moon, I always recommend people go through and, and set goals in relationship to the energy of that new moon. And this is Cancer. So the new moon in Cancer is about home, family, caring, nurturing, how we care for ourselves, how we care for others, and vice versa. What are you doing? What do you want to do? How do you want to set some goals in that area of your life? 
So focus in on that. Come back to this channel because I do do a video for each full moon and new moon, so I'll give you more information then. But just in a nutshell, we know this is going on in that 11th house for you. So this is the best place for it. It's that area of the chart that is all about setting goals and dreams and our hopes and dreams. So this is a fantastic opportunity to set some goals for yourself. Especially those things you can get emotionally charged about. That's cancer. On the 18th of July, Mercury also in the sign of cancer makes a square to Uranus, just like the sun did a few days ago. And that is, that's writing, that's communicating. But when Mercury's in Cancer, we can be emotionally, we communicate emotionally. We have to have our emotions behind what we're saying. I have that in my natal chart, and I can be pretty animated when I talk sometimes. If I'm not feeling it, these videos take a really hard time to go through. So I have to really be feeling it, you know, to get these things to go well. And if I'm not feeling it, I can't force these videos. So sometimes they, they come out late. Whatever. I'm a Gemini. Whatever. <laughs> all right. I want to move on. The 22nd, the sun moves into the sign of Leo. All right. And that is the fixed summer sign that we have. It That is in your 12th house. So now for the next month, 30-ish days, the sun will be moving through your, into and through your 12th house. When the sun is in the 12th house, what that represents is it's the time of year when we go within. And it is just, it's, it's like the month before our birthday, whether this is or not, it's, uh, it could be close. Um, it, uh, well, it is close. It's the month where we go within to, to reflect on the year. And so no matter when your birthday is, when the sun is in that 12th house, that's, that's the feeling that we get. So it's time for us to reflect, time for us to get rid of those things that haven't been working for us. But we're not really going to know what they are because this is kind of like a hidden area of the chart. The 12th house is represents those hidden secrets. It's institutions. It, to me, I always like to talk about it when I'm talking to my students about it. I always like to um, think of it as a closet. I just happen to look at my closet. Um, think of it as a closet that has no light. So when the sun goes in there, the sun will illuminate that sector. and we, All of a sudden, we're going to see the things that we've been stuffing in that closet all year. That's what's going to happen. You get to that area gets to be illuminated so you can work through. And, you know, we, we might as well learn our lessons and get rid of the fada, you know, get rid of the junk. And that's what we really should be doing, especially when the sun moves through our 12th house. Next, I want to move on to July 25th. And on July 25th, Venus in Leo, she's been in the 12th house for a little while already. But with Venus in Leo, she goes retrograde at that point in time on the 25th of July. And she'll stay retrograde until September 5th. And so while Venus is retrograde, because she's at the very end of, um, of Leo right now, well, on the 25th. And when she goes retrograde for those few weeks, it's a time where we get to reevaluate what we value. Venus is about what we value. It's our love relationships, the things we're passionate about, but what we value as well. So all of these things are going to, uh, will be going through some type of reevaluation, maybe an upheaval. It's not necessarily an upheaval, but Leo can be dramatic at times. So if you feel like there's some drama coming to the surface, you know, use it, do it. Honor your feelings, honor what's going on for yourself and work through it. Like I've been saying in every other video so far for this month of July, it's really important that, uh, you know, if, you, if you're looking into getting married at this point in time, well, double check. See if you can, you know, see if that's truly what you want to do when Venus is retrograde and if people happen to get married during that time period, which plenty of people do. It's just the relationship has a karma, a lot of karma in it, and a lot of karma to it. So you're working on old relationships, old issues from this lifetime and if you're anybody who believes in past lives and you're also working on past life issues with that person is that what you want to do that's okay actually if you can work through stuff and just get that karma done and then have a fantastic relationship it's not that the relationship isn't fantastic just know that there is a, a quality and part of the relationship is about working on old issues it's simple as that okay it's not dreadful it's just a little bit of work 
I want to next look at Mars in the sign of Cancer as well. We have a lot of Cancer planets right now this month, whole month of July. We have the Sun, we have the Sun, we have Mercury, we have Mars, and we have, yeah, those three. And that's a lot of energy in that emotional place. So Mars in the sign of Cancer is very, very emotional. That's somebody who really knows how to pitch a fit. It also is making a square to Uranus, just like Mar the Sun did, just like Mercury did. Now it's Mars's turn. So Mars square Uranus is extremely volatile. It's very sudden shifts and changes. We're gonna we something needs to be. We need to break free of something. Now you've had two opportunities so far this month to break free, or to be, to come to a sense of awareness about something. If you haven't, by the time this transit rolls around at the end of July with Mars square Uranus, then something will break, something will shift. So just, and it, again, don't be frightened. Just work your stuff, you know, don't shove it down any further. Work it. That's what all these 12 house transits are about anyways. They're always about moving through stuff. We have them all the time. This is nothing different, nothing new. Just want you to pay attention and uh, work it. You'll be to your advantage, not mine, yours. All right, final piece for July is on the 31st. We have the second full moon of the month. Yes, it's an astrological blue moon because we have two full moons in one month. So what we have here is it is in the sign of Aquarius. So the sun's in Leo and the moon is in Aquarius. That will happen in your sixth house. Full moons in the sixth house mean that we need to make some sort of adjustment in regards to our work, our daily work, our daily routine, the things we do that involve our daily health. That's what we eat, what our diet looks like, exercise, things like that. Full moons, again, are about an awareness. So whether we're doing something correct or not, it's an awareness so we know where we need to make a shift. All right, I'm going to leave you with that. Thank you very much. Bing. <laughs> I want to do that. I love that piece. All right, blessings. Please come find me on the web, nhastrologer.com. Please share. And um, I think that's all I want to say. Thank you. Namaste.